Hey guys, I'm Sam Crack, and today we are going to paint the Corvette Grand Sports front bumper. It's the only thing holding me up from finishing this rebuild project completely. Now, I went and got a few quotes from a few body shops around the area to get the front bumper painted, and they all came in right around 600 bucks. And I really want to keep a tight budget on this project. I know the materials are substantially less, but I know it takes a good amount of effort to paint a bumper. I've never personally done it in a professional manner using spray guns, so I thought I'd give it a shot. I went out and bought all the materials for around $150, and the only thing I needed after that was a spray gun. So I looked online, it seems the professional spray guns cost anywhere from a few hundred dollars to over a thousand dollars. But of course, Harbor Freight is nearby. So the first gun I see at Harbor Freight is only $16, which makes me immediately wonder if this is just a total piece of shit. Well, who cares, right? It's only $16, and of course I got a 20% off coupon, so that is definitely going in the cart. Now, Harbor Freight offers one other gun. The specs are pretty much the same except for one main spec, which is right on the front of the box. I have no clue what it means, but being that this gun is only $70, and of course I've got the 20% off coupon, bringing it under $60, I'm gonna give it a shot of course I go through the line twice make sure you grab that free measuring tape that they offer with any purchase and let's hope that these things don't completely f our job up on the surface of these two spray guns the obvious difference is the build quality you can see that the knobs are all in the same place they've got the same general design but just the build quality these parts feel a lot cheaper this guns a lot lighter it's a lot less substantial than the premium or the professional model here. This has a really nice polished finish. All of the engravings are super nice. The buttons feel super substantial, super tight. Everything is just put together really, really nice. Our subject for this test is gonna be my 2011 Grand Sport Corvette bumper. This bumper suffered a little bit of paint damage in this corner specifically during a minor front end collision and needs to be completely resprayed. Now there's no major body damage to this Corvette. It didn't need any major repair it just needs to be resprayed now I've already began sanding and primering this bumper but it totally isn't perfect because I'm a novice at this so this test will be good for those who are thinking about getting a spray gun and starting to do their own paintwork at home I got this Ingersoll Rand spray gun for super cheap at a local auto parts store and while it was super 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 cheap I'm talking about a few dollars because this is a clearance item that they don't carry anymore I highly recommend you stay away from it, most notably because it is this suction fed. What happens is there's a straw at the bottom of this and it sucks up from this cup using the air pressure from your air compressor, which I have over there. The issue with that is when you're spraying and think about spraying this bumper, when you have to get on a tight angle, like inside here and since i don't have the bumper facing me if you have to spray on an angle like this look at the angle the cup is at the straw won't be able to get anything so it'll be shooting air all over your bumper and it will mess up the flow of your work now that's just what i've noticed many people still use this style gun for primer and that's why i decided to try it with primer to see how comfortable i felt with it and while my primer job actually turned out okay on the bumper it also exposed a little bit of extra body work i need to finish <laughs> to the point of being able to re-primer this bumper. As you see, pretty much most of the primer I've sanded off. And so that was a complete waste of material. However, what the primer did do is it kind of showed where, like you could see there, a guide of where the imperfections were. Look at this little circular scratch all around here. And that's actually something that body shop guys do. They spray a guide coat on a bumper that they're about to paint or about to prime. What that does is it shows exactly what I just showed you, any imperfections in their work. And a guide coat can be done with just a cheap can of black spray paint and not, you know, $30 a quart. 2k primer so i'm learning it's okay i figured i'd waste some sort of material and primer is probably the best material to waste out of everything i bought but you never want to waste stuff if you don't have to
It is now time for our $13 gun to shine. What you see connected here, I also picked up at Harbor Freight. This was like only $2. This is a air moisture filter, and that's very important because whenever I shot using this gun without any sort of moisture filter, you could see droplets come out with the primer. So you need that for sure, and for only a couple dollars, buy a couple of them as I did here. Now, this is an air pressure regulator. This is about six or seven dollars, and this will basically give me a little bit more control over how much air the compressor puts out. So right now what I'm gonna do is mix my uh, primer in this cup right here, and it's hard to see, but you see where it says four to one? This primer mixes at a four to one ratio, so four parts primer to one part hardener. I'm gonna fill this cup up here, and then I'm going to go ahead, hook everything up. And we've got a clean bumper out there. This bumper is ready for a primer coat. nice even coat of primer. One thing I do notice is that there's a few rough spots. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but this is rough to the touch. Now since it's primer and we're going to sand it anyway, that won't be a problem at all. But I'm guessing that happened when I started to run low on material in here. However, this was substantially easier to use. It definitely used less uh, material. This has a 1.4 millimeter tip opposed to the 1.8 millimeter tip on the uh, suction feed gun. I like the way this went a lot better. If I would have just kept more material and monitored it, I probably wouldn't have had this issue. But that's something that I definitely am going to watch when we try the 60 ish dollar gun uh, with the paint. We're going to monitor that closely because we don't want any sort of issues with that. And also paint is going to go on a lot lighter than primer. So we're going to let this dry overnight. We'll sand it down with some six or 800 grit. And then it's off to actually painting and clear coating this thing using the uh, nicer gun. It's the next day. I've went ahead and sanded this down with 800 grit. And what we have is a very smooth completely primered bumper. I'm going to go inside, I'm gonna mix our base coat, put it in the 60-ish dollar spray gun, the Professional Harbor Freight spray gun, and we are going to finally paint our Corvette bumper and see how the $70 gun differs from the cheap $13 gun. Right here I have a pint of Shopline Plus PPG Arctic White paint. I've got a clean paint mixing cup and mixing stick and this is a one-to-one -one ratio so we're going to mix one part of this alpine white paint to one part of this reducer now this is the plus so this pint of paint by itself was almost fifty dollars like 45 46 bucks <laughs> my mask on because it smells out here and I don't want to breathe any of that stuff in but right here is our base coat painted bumper and it came out really really nice really even much easier to do actually than a spray can the only thing that's harder than a spray can is all the mixing and all the cleaning and all that sort of stuff so now we're gonna go we're gonna put shoot the clear on it and hope that goes well so something to note here I bought two of these inline air filters and the first one from screwing something in once and unscrewing it, the threads screwed up on the inside. No, I didn't have it crooked. No, it's just cheap plastic. So it's break. Well, no big deal. These are two bucks, right? I got a second one. When I screwed in the second one, it cracked right here because I over tightened it. And that kind of is my fault. But now two of them are basically uh, useless. And that really sucks because I've Teflon tape. You can see there's Teflon tape everywhere. 
uh, all of this stuff over and over and over again. And it's just air leaking. And so obviously make sure you don't have any air leaks with your gun before you do this. But I'm going to see if I can't get this to work out. Otherwise, I'm going to have to run out to the store, get a new one of these things here, re-Teflon tape it all, and then do it again. All right. Well, I'm not the happiest guy right now. It always seems to happen on the last step. Now, we got good news and bad news. The good news is I think the gun did an amazing job, uh, and the finish came out like a professional body shop. The bad news is, and there's a few little like surface bugs that popped up right at the end. You'll be able to wet sand that out, like I don't think without a problem, because it's right on the surface of the paint. At one point, it was like a horror film and mosquitoes, not mosquitoes, love bugs. If you live in Florida, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Showed up and tried to land all over this thing. Now I started batting them away as quick as I could, but two of them made it on this corner and I have no clue whether or not I'll be able to sand this out. This is basically like clear coated into the finish, which really, really, really makes me angry. Look, here's one right here. At least it's dry to the touch. I can peel them off, but we could keep the focus off the bumper for this video. Let's talk about those two cheap spray guns. If you plan on doing some of your own paint work at home, I don't know how you could go wrong with either of these guns, but especially for only 13 bucks, I couldn't really tell a difference in how this gun performed. Now maybe you like a better fit and finish, you like a better feeling in hand, you like the better quality materials. If you do, at $60, I still don't think anything compares price-wise to the professional or more expensive cheap paint gun from Harbor Freight. But I would tell you is, if you do decide on the more expensive gun, buy the cheaper gun while you're at it. That way you can put your primers or other messier materials in it. You don't really have to worry as much about it. And if you're set on just buying the cheap $13 gun, we'll buy two of them. That way you got one for your primers and one for your base and clear coats. Now, if you've used either one of these guns, I'd love to hear what you have to say in the comment section below. I'm a total non and I'm absolutely amazed at how the job came out and obviously we got the bug problem but I'm pretty confident that with a little bit of sanding and a little bit of touch-up I can make it like that never even happened and Harbor Freight actually sells a detail sprayer which is an even smaller version of this and I think that it's around 10 bucks so maybe I'll be able to test that one out now guys if you have any questions as always my contact information is listed in the description box below I really appreciate you watching and I will catch you very soon